to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to yet another underground transmission of the wireless woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. And if you haven't already, for whatever insane reason, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And click the bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content. Welcome back, Wi Fi. Today I am going to be reacting, if you will, to um, a video because I was talking to one of my friends and he was like, Yeah, you know, the elders really failed us. And I was like, dude, we are the elders. <laughs> like, I don't know if you know this. I know we're the Toys R Us kids generation. You know, we don't ever want to grow up, but we're 40. We are literally in auntie elder status. Like we're about to be ancestors at this point. Like we're getting into the ancestral realm at this point. And um, so we ourselves are the elders. And a lot of the information that we've gained from social media and Beyonce's internet, we as the older, seasoned, more mature, wise generation should be making some of these points for the younger women that are coming into the dating world and the dating realm just like all of the women who came before us sort of paved a way that has helped us to not be our grandparents, not be stuck in dead in marriages and tether. I mean, we were called the ball and chain, but baby, let's be real. They are balls with chains. So, you know, our matriarchs were the ones that told us, hey, go to school, get you an education. You don't need these men. They were city girling before the city girls was city girling. Y'all mad at Sierra because she told you be an independent woman. But Big Mama <laughs> was with your granddad and she was saying the same thing. She was like, look. Don't be like me. You know, so. We're supposed to be reaching forward into these younger generations and stealing in them the value systems of what we've learned being the propagators of culture. And if we're going to be that, and we're going to be the predominant influence on the next generation as mothers and matriarchs, let's make it count. All right. So I'm going to let you watch this video and like, I, <laughs> I should put a trigger warning on it, but go ahead. My reason was during those times when I was younger, I wanted athletic children. Right. So therefore, I dated those who had an athletic background. Right. So you are look. You are, so a lot of people look for, go for aesthetics. Oh. Chad, Chad Johnson says listen. I won't. I won't if I have listen boys or girls. Girls. I want them to be able to play basketball, football. Like if they play track, I play softball, whatever yeah. it is. I want little athletes. It's, listen, I need to see. What did you do in high school? Did you cheer? Did you play volleyball? Did you run track? Right. Did you do softball, anything athletic? Yeah, do, you, do you have footage right. of, of, of anything? Then I, you check the ankles. You, no, listen. No, you're laughing. You're laughing. Know, you're crazy. Listen, the most important foundation in any sport you play is your what? Your footwork. Yeah. Your footwork. If you ain't got the foundation and have so the, the problem. small ankles? Yeah. I mean, what some you gotta be right. You can't have cankles. Then you got you got men these days, you go out, you go out to these beautiful women. Yeah. You go on dates to these five star restaurants. Nah, go to Dave and Buster's. See, see, see about a lateral movement. Can she run? Can she move? Then you have kids and you wonder why they got two left feet and they get picked last in PE. <laughs> huh? Because you're going for aesthetics. Yeah, she's gorgeous. But when you have a kid, then what? Right. I'm not raising models. Right. I don't want no model. Right. I don't care how fine you are. Can you run the 40? <laughs> okay, so before I say anything 
about what I got from that video, I, I want you to drop a comment below and tell me, like, what thoughts went through your head? Like, just drop me some comments and tell me how listening to that line of thought coming from Chad Abuser Ocho Cinco. What did, what did that sound like to y'all? Okay, so it it wasn't just me. Did, didn't it give colonizer? Didn't it give oppressor? Didn't it give enslaver a little bit? Didn't it give you like that Black Friday vibe where like you put a woman on a slave block and like examine her teeth and her buttock to you like she'd be a good breeder? Like didn't it kind of, didn't it give slave owner? Or was that just me? Like, you know, look at the teeth and look at the eyes and stuff like that. This one right here, she's strong. She work hard for you. Okay, it wasn't just me. Um, in my patriarchy video, I talked about how the servant can only be like the master. And like, this is where we're at. This is what we're seeing. Um, you know, he really gave breeder energy, like buck nigga energy there. Where it's like, we want to raise professional athletes and I guess like entertainers. Like, we want to raise the next generation of slaves for these NFL owners. Like, it's our job now to take these master race genes, if you will. I mean, because we haven't mastered anything, but, you know, to take the best of the best slave genes and inseminate the best of the best slave female genes so that we can create the next generation of I mean isn't it isn't it like kind of giving Django energy is it just me this nigga here that nigga there but the wild thing about it is this man got on the internet and thought that this was acceptable to say like even if in the back of your mind that was your motivation for mate selection you said this out loud in the hearing for the judgment of the consuming public. And he said it because in his mind is something to be admired. It's something that, as he said, other men should be thinking about in their mating processes. So when we hear things like fit, feminine and friendly, it's always referring to these female physical, and even in some ways, emotional characteristics. They don't want women that have been touched by trauma and poverty and, you know, these things that create emotional and psychological issues. You know, we as people are going to be touched on some level by certain amounts of adversity, no matter how much we try to distill it out. But the character that is built as a product of healing, you know, learning and growing through adversity is something that gets missed when we are in these communities, these lily white sterile environments that are untouched, unspotted by the blackness. That's what we're really trying to eradicate. But I listened to him talk and even in one of my season two episodes, I talked about how I've never had a man ask me about my financial habits, my hygiene habits, my education, my ambition. And here's yet another man coming along saying, we don't care about none of that. Just give us the womb and the genes, you know, if you will, because most of the time this, this isn't even a conversation that black women are a part of. But my point is breeders, that's what we're dealing with. People who want to be judged by the content of their character, you know, we should not say, oh, I just want a six foot man with a six pack who, if a woman had said this, oh my God, we should want more. Mm -hmm. But these are our men telling us what it takes to buy and sell them. And we have to believe them. We have to trust them. That they have not evolved past being a plantation buck. 
And so it doesn't matter how much education we have. It doesn't matter how many new businesses we own. It doesn't matter how much, because you have to remember, the servant can only be as great as the master, not greater. And so these men are bringing the predominant belief systems of the culture of the master class back down into the culture that you are worth nothing more than to breed us our next generation of athletes. How wild is that? Like it would be a waste of genes <laughs> in his mind if his child was like an astronomer or an engineer instead of an athlete. Like why would I pick an intelligent woman to have a child by? Why would I not relegate my children back to the same type of serv servitude, the possibility of CTE? Like, yeah, that's for my child. That's not just for me. That's for my child as well. So, I mean, you got to think about these things when you look at the group of men that are judging you as being mateable. What is the prevailing ambition and goal of these men that you are in relationship with potentially having children by? Hmm? Hmm? What do they want out of life and what do they want out of your womb? These are the questions that you must ask yourself. And until the next time... Comment me some of your answers, some of what you have found in your intimate relationship with these people. Because they really think I'm out of line. They really think I hate men. I don't. These are our experiences with them. So go ahead and drop me that fire headphones emoji and, and let me know in the comments what your experience has been. What other type of fuck shit <laughs> have you heard that sounds anything like this? Or if I am completely off base, go ahead and let me know in those comments. But until the next wireless transmission, make sure you stay unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed for me. Until then, class is dismissed. They said another gave you niggas money. You don't know how to appreciate it.